Uh, guys, uh, uh, I have received a request on my uh, YouTube asking for explaining the ordinal value of the correlation. So, <clears throat> what I thought is, you know, I'll take this request, not only this request, but uh, whatever the request uh, that I get on my YouTube videos as a feedback uh, or as questions. I'll uh, take up those questions or uh, the problem statements that you have and I'll try to solve them and create a video for you guys. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna explain about this ordinal parameter in the correlation function. So I would say it'll, this is little bit of advanced correlation or advanced uh, load runner, I would say. So that's how I appropriately would name that uh, video as, even though it's not like way too advanced, but it's a little bit advanced topic. So, you know, I would like to name this as an advanced correlation. So coming back to the topic, what is this ordinal value and all that? And also play around with the ordinal value a little bit so that you understand what is it. And finally, I'll show you a little bit of slide share, uh, one slide uh, just to show you what all the possible values of the ordinal value. Okay, so <coughs> coming back, uh, what I will do is I'll quickly create a script uh, with our standard web tools application. Web tools it comes with the load runner itself and uh, I'll pick up a value wherein I would like to correlate it and then uh, play around with the ordinal values. Okay, so uh, let me create a script. So I'll just say add script and then I'll give a name as demo correlation ordinal. Okay, you can give whatever you want the name. So that's the name I have given. So as you can see here, my script is created with three default actions, the user init, action and the user end. I'm going to do all my recordings on in the action, um, in, in action call action. So I'm going to go do the recording on the action call action. Click on start recording. Jojo Bean is a password with which I'm trying to log in. I'm trying to book the flight ticket, so hit on the flight tab. And uh, yeah, it will take some time for the page to load. So I'm booking a flight ticket from probably from Denver to maybe a Portland. I'm selecting. Uh, uh, the window seat, a business class, continue. I'm going to select the third flight. Uh, if you want, you can give up the details. If you don't want, you can just ignore it. I'm ignoring it. So there's no real validation which happens at the back end. So yeah, the, the flight ticket has been booked. Now I'm signing off and uh, stop my recording. The design studio will uh, will show me all the possible uh, values for which I need to correlate. For now, uh, I wouldn't correlate anything. Uh, so let's have a quick look at the script. Okay, this is my login related script, and this is where uh, we'll be searching the flights. Okay, and uh, this is where you have selected Denver, Portland, and uh, the seating preferences, windows, and seating type is business. Okay, so. To demonstrate this ordinal value, I'll use this web request, okay, web submit form, okay, and I'll use specifically the seat preference. So if I go back to my application, okay, if I go back to my application, uh, you see the seat preferences have three options. One is aisle, one is windows, and one is none. So what I've selected is a windows while I'm doing the recording. So that's why you're able to see the windows over here. Okay, so but in the real time project, when you're running this with multiple users, you don't want all the users to always select the windows. You want some of them to select AIL, some of them to select none, some of them to select windows. So what do I do? How do I modify the script so that, uh, that um, this value will be uh, randomly picking up, okay, for different virtual users? One way is to parameterize it. You can put these three values in a parameter file, a flat file, and uh, you can parameterize this uh, value. But that's such a lame way to do it. I mean, imagine you have parameterized it, 
probably in the next release they have added one more button called uh, middle okay let's assume so this is when you have to go back and change the script and then you change the parameter file and you add that one more so as the application changes your script change so that's not the best way to do it so what you can do is you can programmatically uh, pick a random value from this list and how is it possible first you need to correlate this value okay once it correlates this value the parameter okay the parameter the correlated parameter it and if you select an ordinal called ordinal all then the parameter value becomes an array which will store all the possible values for the seat preference which means that it will store ale windows and done when will that happen when you use this ordinal as all if you use the ordinal as one whatever the first okay uh, 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 whatever the first occurrence that it will identify it will take the value and it will put it over there okay but you select ordinal all it will pick up all the values and then you can programmatically randomly select one of the value from that array list okay I hope you understood that but you haven't understood that and I'll demonstrate it for you and this is when you'll understand it better okay so what I'm what I'm doing now I'm correlating this parameter called seat preference okay and uh, why, why am I cor correlating it so that I will capture the all possible values for the seating preference okay so <clears throat> first just like correlation how do you do correlation um, you go to the request before that so for this one the request is over here and then uh, you click on the snapshot okay now you're gonna select the value called windows so I'm gonna I went to a request before this okay and in that request I'm pulling up the snapshot okay how, how do I pull up the snapshot so again, again I'm, I'm showing that this is what I want to correlate so you go to the request before that click on that request and click on this uh, uh, thing called show snapshot pane and here it will show you all the HTTP possible values for that web request okay so I clicked on the request you see there are four possible HTTP requests for this web request that typically happens okay and some people what they do is by mistakenly they click on a empty space over here and they and they and they think that nothing is being pulled up in my snapshot you got to be careful as to where you click okay you have to exactly click on the web request that we wanted okay so accidentally you clicked on some other web request so instead of this web request let's say you have clicked on another web request okay watch carefully I'm clicking on the login web request automatically the HTTP request would change because this HTTP request is for this web request which is the login request so you have to be careful as to where you are clicking on the script so I'm clicking on this web request request which says search flights button so I click on that I'll pull up all the HTTP requests for that and each HTTP request you see there is a request and there is a response so what I will do I'll search for this text called window okay that window will be there in the response of one of these HTTP requests okay there are four HTTP requests and this window text will be there in one of the HTTP requests so I'm starting my search for the from the first and I'm trying to search in the responses find next so it went to the first request and started searching in the request we don't want a windows in the request we want the windows in the response then I say find next again it searched in the request itself now it went to the second HTTP request in the second HTTP request it uh, it searched in the request not in the response so I said find next it went to the third one again in the third one uh, it could find a windows only in the request part so I, I kept going okay finally it is able to find in one of the HTTP requests in the response okay so I'm gonna copy the whole thing here 
I'm copying the whole line onto a notepad so that I can see this a uh, little better. Okay. Now, what I want is the request, uh, the response related to the windows. Okay. So window preference rather than uh, windows or else uh, you can leave it as it is okay so as you can see here the seat preference the first one is a okay and the second one is windows and the third one is none okay I, I will copy these three requests separately so that I can clearly show you okay as you can see here now this becomes the left boundary for your correlation function and this becomes the right boundary for your correlation function the left boundary is pretty much same for all of it and the right boundary is pretty much same for all of it so this becomes my left boundary i'm copying my left boundary and i will start building my web breadth save param so again the placement of the web breadth save param is very important you got that windows text in the response of this request okay so the web breadth save param will be built just above that so what I will do, right click, insert, new step. This step toolbar comes up. In that, I'll type the webridge save param one. Okay, it shows all the ones which starts with webridge. So I'm gonna use this LR function, which is webridge save param underscore ex. Just double click on that. And it will ask for the parameter name. I'll give a parameter, uh, meaningful parameter name. Here we are selecting the seat preference. I give that left boundary. We already figured out what was the left boundary just, just now. This is the left boundary and this is the right boundary. Okay, guys, if you're using the older versions of Load Runner, make sure you keep an escape character over here. An escape character usually means this, this is the escape character. Okay, so uh, when you have double quotes, you don't want the LR to get confused with the double quotes. That's why you keep a escape character just before the double quotes. So if it was an older versions of Load Runner, you 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 have to put that escape character manually. But in the newer versions, uh, in the newer versions, uh, the Load Runner itself, okay. Once I click on OK, the Load Runner itself will put the escape character. I'm going to demonstrate that. Now the most important part. Here, you keep the ordinal as all, which means that all the matching left boundaries and all the matching right boundaries, it pick up all the values in that. Right now, for this left boundary and for this right boundary, there are three matching words. So once you put ordinal all, it will pull out all the three values, which I will demonstrate. Okay, if you put ordinal one, ordinal is equal to one, so it will pull out the first occurrence, which is just the eighth value. Okay, so I'll demonstrate both of them. First, I will demonstrate with ordinal one, or uh, so ordinal all, then I will demonstrate with ordinal all. Uh, sorry, ordinal one. First, let's do ordinal all. Again, load runner is a case sensitive. Make sure you, you type the right uh, case. For all, it's capital A, capital L, and capital L, okay? We'll also discuss about offset and save length a um, little bit uh, after this, okay? Click on okay. So let's observe uh, what kind of function that is built, okay? You see web breadth save param, uh, parameter name is the seating preference which we have selected, and you see this is the left boundary, and as I've told you, this <coughs> escape character is automatically being added by the load runner, okay? So you need not have to add it manually. The load runner will do it for you. Uh, this is version 12.5. If it's an older version, you have to manually put the escape character. Okay, and you use this. And this is my right boundary, which is again a double quotes. Since it's a double quotes, you have to put a escape character before that. And the ordinal value is capital ALL. -L. So let's see what kind of values it will pull up. Just to demonstrate it well, the kind of values it will pull out, what I will do is I will put a uh, toggle. Uh, now, let's go ahead and execute it. Hopefully this time around, it will, it will go through fine. So again, it came to the step where I put the toggle point. Now I'll do a step-by-step -step execution. Uh, keep a watch on the runtime data, guys. So now as soon as I execute this piece of code, 
this is where my control is this piece of code automatically all the values for the seating for the parameter seat preferences will show up now you can see here seat preferences is the parameter that you have declared seat preferences is the parameter that you have declared in the web rate save param and that parameter right now is not is an array you see seat preferences underscore one preference seat preferences underscore two and underscore three and the count is three so it's an array since because you have declared it as an ordinal all and it's pulled out all the values you see ale window and none you can go back so all these values are now captured by you now programmatically you can replace these values uh, you can randomly select one of these values and replace that in my in your next request which is this so instead of all the time windows for all the iterations and all the uh, users now it will randomly select one of the values from this one so this is the whole purpose of the ordinal i hope you got the point now i am going to execute the same script with ordinal one and i'm going to show you that it will just pick up the first value so i will stop this uh, script so what i will do is now instead of ordinal all i will mark this as one save the script and go ahead and execute the script okay so again keep an keep an eye on the runtime data i am doing a step by step execution and you see that now since you put ordinal 1 uh, the correlation parameter is no longer an array is just one pa single parameter and the value which is the first value i will be selected because you have uh, you have personally selected it as or you have uh, asked you have you have put uh, the ordinal value as one okay so this is the whole uh, idea about the ordinal value but in case if you don't put any value for ordinal i uh, i will stop this uh, script you don't put any value for ordinal or you didn't included that uh, a variable called ordinal or a parameter called ordinal in your web rate save param by default it will select the value as one okay again i will demonstrate that for you again so now what i'm what i'm doing i'm commenting out this piece okay only this line here okay which means that you are not giving any value for the ordinal since you haven't given any value for the ordinal by default it will take the value as one for ordinal again i am commenting it out and i have saved and i am executing it just to demonstrate that if you don't give any value for ordinal it will uh, by default it will take the value as one you see it has defaultly take the value as okay now we'll play around with the offset there is there are two things one is the offset and uh, the other other one is the string length so let's play around with that to for so that you will understand what are these two uh, parameters again um, so <coughs> okay you have uh, by choice you have uh, made it as ordinal is equal to 1 so now what i'm doing again uh, i want to insert new step web bridge save param so i want to play around with this save offset and save length parameter name seat underscore preference i'm giving and left boundary the same left boundary uh, that you have given and the right boundary is just the double quotes i'm giving this value this is from the previous uh, we have just done this so we know these values so i'm not going to play with the ordinal value anymore if you leave it empty the default value is one save offset so i'm putting it as two uh, save offset yeah i'm putting it as two and save length i'm putting it as one and click on okay okay save offset i put it as two save length i put it as one first let's play around with the save offset i'm coming commenting out the save length part and uh, i'm i'm taking away the uh, toggle point here and uh, i will comment out my first correlation function so that 
only the second correlation function will be active and this since we don't didn't give any value for ordinal the default value is 1 so save offset is 2 is what you have put here again here I'm going to put a toggle point save it control s and run it so I'm going to do a step by step execution so you can watch it with your eyes what happens you see offset it was supposed to be I A I S L E but since you have put an offset of 2 okay what you have put you put an offset of 2 the first two letters they are taken away and the last whatever the last in the here in this case S L E that's been taken so you want to delete a part of a string at the starting of it you can use the offset part are we clear now I'm gonna demonstrate the save length part okay so here I will comment out the offset part and include the save length part okay so save length I'm putting it as uh, let's put it as three okay one is too small to understand let's put it as three and let's see what happens I've saved it I'm executing it okay <coughs> again watch out for that uh, runtime data guys you see AIS so since you put it as three save length the first three letters will be saved which is AIS I hope now you got the complete power of the correlation uh, I hope this video helps you